That man delivered. Now, Hong Kong's legendary monetary stability is a major key to his success, along with a welcoming and conducive financial regulatory environment. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority is the steward of these mechanisms, and we now welcome the chief executive of the HKMA, Mr. Eddie Yoy. Please. Hey, Eddie, how about a virtual vacation? I have arranged a virtual getaway for you. Let's put on those glasses and hop on board. Look, your favorite artist just unleashed a new masterpiece with this fascinating new AR feature. Wow, with so many elements to play with, let's create something unique. Nice work, Eddie. You've got talent. Welcome to the ocean, where over 90% of life exists. Look, I think we've detected a rare species. Isn't life full of wonderful surprises? I know a good restaurant nearby. Let's treat ourselves to something special. Try this new dish that is trending among foodies. The way you look at that photo tells me you can't wait to get back in action. Let's get ready for this year's Hong Kong FinTech Week. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Hong Kong FinTech Week. And I'm really glad to be here with you in the real world after my avatar has traveled like three continents and two oceans in the metaverse and having a real good vacation. Now, back to this conference. The theme this year is FinTech Redefined. And back in around 2016, when the term FinTech was first coined, and it was also about the time that the HKMA establish our fintech facilitation office. The term fintech used to be a catch-all term, so much so that many of us in the field, uh, sometimes we, we get confused. But over time, fintech has evolved from a buzzword into an essential part of our everyday life, and so has its lexicon. The industry and its branches have become more specialized and less contrived, and the different functions have become sufficiently distinct from each other to warrant their own terms, their own teams, departments, or even industries. And as a result, we started to see the rise of more defined terms like wealth tag, green tag, legal tag, insure tag, and many more. And it was also around that time that the HKMA also set up more specialized teams. For example, uh, we now have our red tag and sub tag teams uh, in order to tackle more specific issues in greater depth. And fast forward to today, against the backdrop of rap very rapid advancement in technology like AI or blockchain, and also drastic changes in the macro environment, uh, including, for example, the post-pandemic challenges, uh, the global slowdown in the economy, uh, the still high inflation trajectory, it actually makes sense to revisit the term fintech to see if we need to calibrate or update the definition or whether there are certain aspects that we need to reinforce. As you all know, the HKMA has been on the FinTech journey for over seven years now. And today, I would like to take the opportunity to share what we've learned from this journey with you. And I hope that will contribute to our co collective understanding. First, through our FinTech journey and for all our FinTech projects to best fruits, we cannot stress enough the importance of long-term commitment. And by that, I mean the need to really pull in years of hard work and sustained investment. And let me explain. <clears throat> For the parents in the audience here, when it comes to think about paying school fees for your children, just think about it. When was the last time you were using paper check for that? And I believe many of you will be increasingly relying on apps like eClass so that you can pay the school fees and other fees to the schools in a quick and uh, immediate way through the uh, faster payment system in Hong Kong without even having to leave the app environment. And also think about when you last pay your utility bills or management fees. Did you just use the FPS QR code printed on the bill to pay for it or do you use checks? 
I can see many of you nodding in agreement. And for those of you who are still using paper checks, I think you really need to think about catching up with the digital age. And I once read that bamboo remains mostly unseen for almost five years when they develop the extensive root system under the ground. But when the time is right, I was told that it can suddenly burst into the air 90 feet high in just two months. And I would like to think that the same phenomenon probably applies to FinTech. And the FPS is a good example. When it was first launched, it was not an overnight success. Its popularity today is the result of years of hard work and also perseverance. Winding back to five years ago when we first launched the FPS, the primary focus was on facilitating P2P payments. And because of the more limited functionalities and also the challenge of overcoming user inertia, for example, you've been using paper check for many years. The FPS was actually not an immediate overnight success, but we remain committed to investing into the platform and introducing new features to meet the user demand as it evolved. Over time, the public was now able to use the FPS for different purposes, like the ones I talk about, paying school fees, uh, paying bills, management fees, and also topping up your e-wallets, and also making payments to merchants. So the users have been really very and diverse. And the introduction of all these new features, combined with the impact of COVID, which almost forced us to get digitalized, it resulted in a big surge in the FPS adoption since early 2020. But I would like to stress that our FPS journey will not stop here. We are continuing our efforts to expand the functionalities, including about cross-border payment. And I'll talk a little more about that upcoming feature a bit later. The second point I would like to make about our FinTech journey is that FinTech is more than just the convergence of Fin and Tech. It's much more. It's an interdisciplinary subject that intersects with other fields. For example, uh, law, sociology, politics, economics, and more. So in order to move uh, FinTech forward, we need an interdisciplinary mindset and approach. And how is FinTech a cross-disciplinary subject? Think about your most recent travel. Were all payment methods, including cards and cash, were accepted in your travel destination, whether it's Thailand, Japan, or China? Or were local payment apps the only options? Did you encounter any challenges when setting up or topping up your e-wallets across the borders? So in that sense, payments actually extend beyond the boundaries of finance and technology. They intersect with financial inclusion issues, things like uh, user experience or even cross-border regulatory frameworks. And in order to elevate payments to the next level, we need to consider these matters from different angles. For example, from a social science angle. Or think about the virtual asset space. I believe that for FinTech enthusiasts like yourself, you must have explored some investment in the virtual asset space. Which channels did you use for your investments? How confident were you in your investment decision? Again, these matters extend beyond the realms of finance or technology. From the investor's point of view, investment in virtual assets is very much about customer protection and trust. And for the intermediaries selling and distributing the products and services, on the top of their mind, what they need is clarity in regulation and standards. And these concerns will need to be looked at from legal, policy, and regulatory perspective. And I've mentioned earlier that in order that we can move FinTech forward, a cross-disciplinary mindset is essential. And I believe that the most effective way to achieve this mindset in any organization is collaboration. It's the need to foster collaboration with the, uh, with the bright minds from diverse fields. And to me, FinTech is by nature collaborative and not competitive and it is focused on opportunities and not threats. So how can we put collaboration into action in the FinTech space? I would like to look at it from two angles. One is cross-sector collaboration, and the other is cross-border collaboration. 
Cross-sector collaboration holds immense value because each sector can focus on doing what is best at, in turn maximizing the overall efficiency of any project. One example is the Hong Kong ME's Open API initiative that many of you are familiar with. We published the framework back in 2018 and have been monitoring its implementation. After we published the framework, it was the Association of Banks that pulled out the API standards afterwards. And with the standards and the framework, it was the banks that actually implemented uh, the APIs in accordance with those framework. And then the third party service provider can use the APIs to offer very innovative service. And even the science park can use the API information for reference of their coding developers. So this is a very good example of how collaboration from smart people in different sectors can drive success, with each focusing on their own areas of expertise, but with a common goal. And in this case, it's the adoption of the API. Another example is the Digital Asset Initiative. And I mentioned earlier that in the digital asset space, investor protection is crucial, and it needs to be examined from legal, policy, and regulatory perspective. And this is an area where the HKMA has been closely collaborating with our other regulator, uh, the Secur Securities and Futures Commission, in order to provide clear guidance and standards to the industry. We have already rolled out investor protection measures in, or in order to ensure that the intermediaries, including the banks, have a very clear understanding of their responsibilities when they distribute digital asset products and services. The aim is very simple. It is to make sure that the investors under understand the relevant risks and they are prepared to bear them when they invest in these digital assets. The second area is cross-border collaboration which is growing increasingly important because cross-border activities are becoming more frequent. In my view, we have a much better chance to solve the existing banking pain points when central banks work together. And I've, as I mentioned just now, I will illustrate this point with a preview of an upcoming feature of the faster payment system. The HKMA has been collaborating closely with the Bank of Thailand to link up our two FPS together. Ours is a uh, faster payment system, and theirs is called PromPay. And I'm very pleased to announce that starting from the 4th of December, about a month from now, the two central banks will jointly launch a new service called FPS Cross PromPay QR Payment. So that in December and in the coming Christmas and New Year holiday, when you visit Thailand, you can actually use your FPS wallet uh, to pay, scan and pay over 8 million prompt pay merchants around Thailand without really having the hassle of exchanging Hong Kong dollar to uh, Thai baht beforehand. It's that much easier to do it right there with your, with your uh, mobile phone, with the FPS, with the, uh, and with the exchange conversion taking place right at the transition point. And in the other direction, of course, Hong Kong FPS merchants can also accept, uh, who, with Hong Kong uh, uh, FPS merchants, which accept uh, QR payments, they can also benefit by being able to receive prompt pay payments from Thai tourists coming to Hong Kong. And for the last 10 minutes, I've talked about the evolution of the FinTech definition and also share some of the things that the HKMA has learned from our experience. And before I close, I would like to take a moment to share a few thoughts about the shape of things to come in the next five years or so. Of course, I won't have a crystal ball, but there are three areas that I would envisage very quick developments in the next few years. First, I believe that the cross-border payment landscape will undergo significant improvement, both at the wholesale and retail levels, making payments that much easier and faster. And zooming into the ASEAN region, for example, on the wholesale level, I would expect that the Enbridge platform that is also co-founded by the HKMA will be operational by then, and it will be settling a good volume of international trade in almost real time. And at the retail level, the private sector, of course, will continue to roll out very novel cross-border payment solutions, and I believe that more central banks will establish bilateral connections 
were between their instant payment system, like the PromPay FPS linkage. And in fact, with the poten potential launch of Project Nexus, coordinated by the BIS Innovation Hub, it is a project that aims to connect different instant payment systems around the region in a multilateral way. And if that is launched, cross-border payment will become even more convenient and affordable to both individuals and business alike. And the second major area that I think there will be fast development is about the use of data. It will certainly become much more extensive and diverse. In Hong Kong, I believe that a more vibrant data landscape uh, will be established when the government creates a new data policy office, which was announced just uh, last week uh, by the chief executive in his policy address. And also, it will be uh, much more better with the convenient and orderly flow of cross-boundary data within the Greater Bay Area. In addition, the launch of a government-led data sharing initiative, which will be implemented by the end of this year, it will not only enable easier data sharing among government departments, but it will also be, but it will also allow um, the banks to have the ability to access more government data through the HKMA's commercial data interchange. And these government data, including, for example, the corporate information of registered companies, uh, the business registration particulars, and importantly, tax-related data, uh, they can actually have the potential to greatly, uh, uh, greatly facilitate the bank's operations, including, for example, credit assessment, uh, customer due diligence, or risk uh, management. And this rich data landscape, combined with the financial institution's responsive use of AI, I believe will further magnify the transformative power of data and also the computing power. And third, in fact, one of the more important areas for me as well, I believe that the pace of blockchain innovation, especially tokenization, will increase in the next few years. Today, use cases such as the tokenized bond has already gone beyond the proof of concept stage and have been already adopted in real transactions. In fact, we ourselves assisted the government uh, to issue the world's first ever tokenized government green bond uh, earlier this year in order to demonstrate the compatibility of Hong Kong's legal and regulatory environment with this very new issuance format. We are already, discuss we are already discussing with the industry uh, to explore the next tokenized issuance in order to open up new possibilities. And moving forward, we can expect a rise in tokenize, uh, we can expect a rise in the tokenization of different assets. And in order to support the gradual adoption of tokenization, I will also expect that there will be increased use of blockchain-based payment methods, including things like stablecoin wallets or tokenized deposits offered by the banks. And I also, and I also share the view that Central bank digital currency, CBDC, can usefully serve as a foundation layer, providing stability and perhaps facilitating the transfers between different wallets or between different payment methods or being an interface between the traditional and blockchain-based payment platforms. And, but that said, despite all the promising signs, there are still a lot of challenges ahead. For example, we will need to address questions such as how should we define, really define legally tokenized securities? Or whether DVP can really be achieved for tokenized securities? Not to mention the very complex legal considerations and also interoperability challenges that are already under discussion in the central bank community. As I said, nobody really has a crystal ball about what will come and can, and can say for sure you know, what will happen in the future. But we can be certain about one thing, that FinTech will continue to be a continuous, cross-disciplinary and collaborative long-term commitment. Thank you very much, and I hope you will enjoy the FinTech Week. Thank you. And thank you very much to the Chief Executive of HKMA, Eddie Yu. As a parent who pays school fees, as someone who travels, I love how Eddie can take